Welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part one of ADO.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about what ADO.NET is, what are .NET data providers. So what's ADO.NET? ADO.NET is not a different technology altogether. In simple terms, you can think of ADO.NET as a set of classes or framework that can be used to interact with data sources like databases and XML files. The data from these data sources can then be consumed in any .NET application. ADO stands for Microsoft ActiveX Data Object. ASP.NET web applications, Windows applications, and console applications. These are a few of the different types of .NET applications that uses ADO.NET to connect to a database, execute commands, and then retrieve data and display that data within those applications. Let's actually look at a simple example of how to actually connect to a database, retrieve, you know, execute some commands against that database, and then retrieve data and display it in an application. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have a simple ASP.NET web application. And on this web form, let's drag and drop a grid view control. We haven't spoken about grid view control yet. We'll be talking about that in a later session. The idea of this session is basically to give you an introduction to ADO.NET. So let's drag and drop the grid view control. And you can find the grid view control under data tab. So expand that, drag and drop the grid view control onto the web form. And then you can for auto format that to make it look nicer. Let's select brown sugar, click OK. Now go to the code behind file. Now look at this. This is .NET application. Now this .NET application has to connect to a SQL server and execute a SQL command, retrieve data, and display that within this .NET application. Now, if you look at .NET and SQL Server, they are two different technologies. Now, SQL Server will not understand C Sharp or VB or any .NET programming languages. SQL Server only understands SQL. So, from within your .NET application, you know, if this .NET application has to get the data available in SQL Server, now in SQL Server, I have a table called TBL product, and that's present in this sample table. So obviously, if the .NET application has to communicate with SQL Server and retrieve data from there, the .NET application first must establish a connection to SQL Server. Next, it has to prepare a SQL command and issue that command to the server and execute that. And once you have the results back, display that within the application. So obviously, we first need to create a connection. Okay. Now, remember, we are connecting to the SQL Server. So all the classes that help me to connect to SQL Server are present in a namespace called system.data.sqlclient. Okay, system.data.sqlclient. So first of all, I need to establish the SQL connection. So SQL connection con is equal to new SQL connection. Now, don't worry about these objects. You know, we will be talking about them in a very great detail in, in a later session. The idea of this session is basically to understand or to have a high level overview of what ADO.NET is all about. Okay, so obviously to connect to a SQL server, you need to tell to this connection object what's the name of the server and within that server which database do you want to connect to and what's the user ID and password to connect. So you have to provide that information to this connection object, otherwise it will not be able to connect to the SQL server. So I will have to use call, you know data source property and data source is equal to dot which means connect to a local instance of SQL server database is equal to sample. So if you look at the database here within which we have our table, it's the sample database. And I'm going to specify integrated security is equal to SSPI. Now what does this mean? This means that I'm using Windows authentication to connect to the SQL Server. Now again, as I told you, don't worry too much about this object here and about this connection string. We'll be talking about them in great detail in next parts in this video series. Here, the whole idea is to get an high level overview of what ADO.NET is all about and what do we mean by .NET data providers. Okay, so I have the SQL connection object. The next thing is we have to prepare the SQL command. So obviously SQL only understands, I mean SQL Server only understands SQL. So we have to issue the SQL command from within the .NET application. So let's prepare the SQL command. And to prepare that, I use the SQL command object. SQL command CMD is equal to new SQL command. And then we need to specify the command. So select star from TBL product. 
and execute this command using this connection object. So you have to pass that as parameter as well. Okay, so we have the command. Now open the connection. So I'm opening the connection. Now after you open the connection to the SQL Server, execute the command. So execute reader. This is this will execute the command and retrieve the results from the database. So once I execute execute this method, it's going to return the data back in the form of a SQL data reader. So I'm going to store that in a SQL data reader object. Let's call it as RDR. So when I execute this command using this method, look at the IntelliSense. The IntelliSense says it's going to return a SQL data reader object. So I'm storing that results back in that object. And then all I'm doing is we have this grid view one control. I'm setting the data source property of that control to RDR, meaning whatever data that we have got back, you know, assign that to the data source property of the grid view control. And then finally call grid view one dot data bind. So bind the data and then finally close the connection. All right. So it seems so simple until now. Okay, so if you look at this, as I told you, don't worry too much of this, too much about this code. We are going to talk about every object that we see here in a very great detail in later sessions. All right, so we are preparing the connection object using this connection string. We are telling which database in which server we want to connect to, and then you're preparing the SQL command object, and then you're telling execute this command on this connection object, open the connection execute the command, whatever result you get back, store that in this SQL data reader object, and then use that data reader as the data source for your grid, grid view control, and then call the data bind method. So now obviously when we run this application, what should happen? The .NET application should establish a connection to the SQL server, issue this command select star from TBL product, execute that, retrieve the result, and bind that to this grid view control that we have. And as you can see, the result is here. Now, if you notice here, I'm connecting to the SQL Server. Okay, so my, my backend is SQL Server for this application, for the .NET application. Now, can a .NET application get data from an Oracle database? Absolutely, it can get data from any database. Okay, any, any database, not only databases, even from XML files, text files, etc. Okay, now, Okay, we, we know how to connect to SQL Server. Now, how do I connect to Oracle Server? Now, again, it's very simple. Now, can I use the SQL connection object, SQL command, and SQL data reader objects to connect to Oracle database? No, different databases use different protocols. So obviously, there are no universal set of classes that can actually accomplish that. So if you want to connect to SQL Server, you are using the classes SQL Connection, SQL Command, SQL Data Reader that's present in this namespace, system.data.sqlclient. Okay, now let's say I want to connect to an Oracle database, then how do I do that? Now, you know, if you know how to connect to one database, then connecting to another database is no big deal. It's just that you use a different class, uh, I mean different objects. But the concept is the same. You have to prepare the connection object. You have to prepare the command. You have to execute that and then store the results in a reader object and then bind that to a control. So let's look at that. So let's say I want to, let's comment these lines for the time being. Actually, let me copy those and then comment those lines. So I'm copying them. Let's paste that. Let's uncomment these lines now. So now if I want to connect to Oracle database, all I do is instead of saying SQL connection, I say Oracle connection. And remember, this Oracle connection is actually present. If you look at, if I say system.go to definition, this is present in system.data.oracle client namespace. Okay, so Oracle connection is equal to new Oracle connection. And instead of using SQL command, as you might have guessed by now, you use Oracle command. Is equal to new Oracle command because the data source that I am talking to is now going to be Oracle. And again, instead of SQL data reader, Oracle data reader 
command dot look at this the exact same code all I have changed is instead of using SQL connection I'm using Oracle connection instead of using SQL command we are using Oracle command instead of using SQL data reader we are using Oracle data reader okay and another difference is that this Oracle connection is actually present in system dot data dot Oracle client namespace so what we can say from this is that if you look at the presentation data provider dotnet data provider for SQL server is system dot data dot SQL client meaning all the classes that will help us connect to SQL server execute commands and then retrieve data back are present in system dot data dot SQL client and if the database is Oracle then those set of classes are present in system dot data dot Oracle client another common naming pattern that you have to observe here is uh, if it's SQL Server the prefix that we are using is SQL if it's Oracle the prefix for the objects that we are using is Oracle Oracle connection Oracle command Oracle data reader and similarly if the data source is an OLEDB data source, OLEDB data sources meaning data sources like uh, Microsoft Access, Excel, etc. Okay, so if you want to connect to them and then get data, you use OLEDB connection, OLEDB command, etc. OLEDB data reader. And those are present in the namespace system.data.oledb. So I can now say if I want to connect to an OLEDB data source, OLEDB, look at that, OLEDB command, OLEDB connection, OLEDB data adapter. Now what is OLEDB data adapter? Don't worry about that. We are going to talk about that later in this series. Okay, and similarly if you want to connect to any ODBC data source, you use ODBC connection, ODBC command, ODBC data adapter, etc. Okay, so basically data provider means the set of classes that can actually talk to a specific data source and then provide data to a .NET application. So we can say .NET data provider for SQL Server is system.data.sql client because all the classes that can help us to connect to SQL Server are actually present in system.data.sql client namespace okay so these are different dot net data providers and it's very important that we understand these terms you know because that makes our communication at workplaces easy and not only that when you read some articles on the internet there's a lot of technical jargon so if you want to understand those articles properly it's important that we understand these terms okay so just to give you I mean if you if you look at this here this is a web application right we were able to connect to a SQL server database using web application now using dotnet it's not just web applications that we develop we can develop Windows applications console applications web services you know there are there are different types of applications that we can develop with dotnet so all the web applications you know I mean all the different types of applications use if at all if they want to display data then they have to use ADO.NET. So it's not just specific to an ASP.NET web application developer. Everybody needs to know ADO.NET. Okay, so here, if you look at this web, Windows console, any type of .NET application uses ADO.NET. Okay, within ADO.NET, we know that we have got, let me actually show you an example. Here, we have just seen how to work with a console application. I actually have a Windows application that I have just written now, you know, which can connect to a SQL Server. So if you look at this, I have Windows Forms application. Uh, in Windows Forms application, we have a control called Data Grid View Control. So if you look at the form, this control is the Data Grid View Control that I have dragged and dropped on this form. And if you look at the you know code behind for that form look at that I'm using SQL connection SQL command SQL data reader and then I'm using that as the data source for our grid view control I'm closing the connection so whether it is Windows or web you know you still use ADO.NET so when I run this application see that it's the same data my Windows application is using ADO.NET to connect to a data source in this case SQL Server you know retrieve data and display it so no matter what type of .NET application you are developing, if at all, if that, if you want that application to work with some databases, then you will have to use ADO.NET. So any type of .NET application uses ADO.NET. 
within ADO.NET we know there are several objects connection object command object data reader object these three objects we have seen today you know a simple example and there is also data adapter object okay we'll talk about these objects in detail going forward okay and then there is this data set which is colored differently you know depending on the provider the connection command data reader and data adapter objects are going to have a different prefix for example if the provider is system.data.sql client then it's going to be SQL connection, SQL command, SQL data reader and SQL data adapter. If you're going to interact with Oracle database then you use the system.data.oracle client which is the .NET data provider for Oracle. Okay, so in that case the connection is going to be Oracle connection, Oracle command, Oracle data reader, Oracle data adapter. Okay, and the same logic applies for OLEDB and ODBC data providers. But whereas when you consider data set, you know, we don't have SQL data set or Oracle data set. You know, it's just data set. Because, you know, once we connect to a database, you know, execute the commands and get the data into .NET, we can store that in a data set object. Okay, in a disconnected fashion. So this is not tied to any provider. In fact, this data set is actually present in system.data namespace. It's not present in the provider namespace. So if you actually go back to, you know, our application. So when you say system.data dot, look at that. I can find the data set within system.data set. Okay, so this is not present in system.data.sql client or system.data.oracle client. Okay, it's not provider specific. That's why I colored that a little different. We will be talking about these objects anyway in a greater detail in the next sessions of this video series. Okay, and then these different providers talk to different databases. SQL client obviously talks to SQL server, Oracle client talks to Oracle, OLEDB to OLEDB, and many other data sources there. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.